give me a show of hands. Who actually watched the message on from last week? A few of us. That's great. That's great. And because uh, I want to continue on from there. And uh, look, with this with this lockdown stuff, New South Wales has been you know really hammered for the last couple of months. And uh, you know, I just personally think that it's not a matter of if, but when. Um, you know, this thing is in our country, and uh, we really do want to be able to continue to provide uh, an opportunity for us to connect, to hear the word of God, to grow as Christians, to to be people who will who will continue to walk with God, regardless of what happens. Regardless. God is still on the throne. He's not locked down. And, uh, you know, while we may have restrictions put on us, we can still be able to put up messages like that on Facebook or on the website. And as Deb was saying, that's why I asked her about those Zoom meetings. It's Opportunity Connect. We have the technology now where we can do that stuff. You know, we can connect on Zoom meetings. We can do these things. So regardless of what happens externally, it's so good to be able to come together that if we don't have that uh, ability, we can still connect, we can still hear the word of God, we can still pray for one another, we have telephones, we have technology, we can do stuff. Hello? So we're not going to be, we're not going to be uh, told to stop being Christians and stop having church somehow. Hello? We're going to continue to push forward and to continue to believe God, to connect with one another and to believe God. I actually think that it's a great opportunity for us to press into these opportunities and ways and pathways forward for the kingdom of God. And, uh, uh, you know, the, some of the most powerful churches are the underground churches. Most powerful churches in the world are when they pushed underground. And so whether it's through a pandemic or, or through an a author, authoritarian, get that word out, government, you know, as happens in China and so forth, where they just shut down uh, churches unless they can control them. God still moves, and there's so many, many powerful uh, moves of God around the world in the midst of those circumstances. And I believe we can be part of that. I can believe that God can still move. And do you believe that? God is moving powerfully. He's not locked down. You know, we're seeing the songs about it this morning. He can make a way, even though we don't see it, even though we don't feel it, God can make way. I believe that God can make way. And if we've got the uh, uh, mechanisms to do that, you know, we're going to believe God to make way forward. So I want you to stay encouraged, be encouraged. We're going to find a way forward somehow or other, and it might change the way we do things, but it's not going to stop us. Amen? God is moving. He's a good God. And uh, we're going to do what we can to, to make way for that. And... Uh, you know, when God spoke in the beginning and created the heavens and earth, He created all the living creatures. He's the, he's the father after which every father on earth is named. He's a dad. And uh, by nature, by definition, a dad has sons. A dad has kids. He's a creator. He's a creator God. And in the beginning, in Genesis chapter 1 and 2, we see this creation thing happening where God spoke. And he said, this is good. God created this world we live in, and it's good. And then he created man. And the first responsibility that man had, he says, he, he gave us, let me find the verse here, the Lord God in chapter 2, verse 7, formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. And he planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he formed, and out of the ground of the Lord God made every tree grow. And the tree of life was also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And he said to the man, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, except one. And God gives us free choice. We still have free choice. And sometimes when we're believing for a move of God, it's like we want everything to change according to our values. And we want to remove all the things that are not according to our values. But that's not what God did. He still gives us free choice. We can choose which way we want to go. And everybody has free choice. We have choice. It's a God thing that we have choice. It's a Christian thing 
do we have choice? It's an ungodly thing when we lose our choices. I've got a, um, an unsaved brother-in-law. He's not a Christian, but my sister is a Christian, and she just believe in God for him and, and rounded him up. And, and you know, she loves baking and cooking like we should do for Jenny for when they're going out west. And, and she takes her stuff into church. And he comes along and helps them make coffee and sell all the cakes. He won't go into the meeting, but he's in there serving everybody. With, <laughs> and God's rounded him up. But he's, he just says, I don't believe in, you know, that we should be a Christian nation. And I said, yeah, but, yeah, but you want to have a look at the alternatives. Because a Christian nation is a nation where you have choice. And you can choose whether you want to, what you want to do and who you want to be. But you look at the nations that do not have Christianity, they remove choice. You don't have choice what to do, where to go, what you eat, what you wear. And that's part of the values of our Christianity that we have choice. God gives us choice. He, he's, a, he's a good God. He, he, he makes way for us. And the first responsibility he said that gave to man was, says, you look after the garden that I created. And we have the responsibility to look after this earth. Well, that's our job. To tend it and to keep it. That was man's job. Look after the garden. But of course we know that the, the first man, uh, <coughs> what was the first woman actually got deceived by the serpent and the man followed. God created the woman out of the man, took a rib, put Adam in a deep sleep. And, and uh, when Adam woke up, there was this woman and he said, whoa, man. That one for you, Harley. <laughs> he created a woman. And they ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which they won't, weren't supposed to eat of it. And there was a consequence for that. He says, on the day you eat of that, you'll surely die. Now, on the day they eat of it, we look at what happened. They didn't die physically but they were kicked out of the garden. They were kicked out of the presence of God and spiritually disconnected from God. They spiritually died. Well, I want to show you what else happened here in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 17. The Lord God said to the serpent, there's a curse on you. You're cursed more than all the cattle, more than every beast of the field, and on your belly you'll go. You shall eat dust all the days of your life. And man was formed out of the dust. And the only place that the devil can touch us is it through our flesh nature, out of the dust. We've been born again of the spirit, which he cannot touch. And I, he said, I will put enmity between you and the woman. Any women here like snakes? Well, that one's fulfilled. <laughs> and between your seed and her seed, and you shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. I'm getting there to verse 17. To the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children. Your desire shall be for your husband and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam he said, Because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I command you, saying you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. What was the job that God gave Adam? to tend the ground. Here's the point. God never cursed man. He did not curse man. The devil was cursed, but you and I are not cursed. Man was never cursed. The ground was cursed. He cursed the ground. Cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat it all the days of your life. God never cursed man. He'd never cursed us. God is one who wants to bless us. He is not one who has cursed us. I know some people that 
spend their whole lives trying to break through and trying to overcome and they're always looking for where the curses come from. What is the sin that has caused this? What is the thing? God never cursed me. But there are things that bring a curse. Genesis chapter 12, God spoke to Abraham. So we've gone from the father of men to the father of faith. From God the father of all, to Adam the father of mankind, to Abraham the father of faith. And the Lord said to Abraham, Get out from your country, from your family, from your father's house to the land I will show you, and I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you, and I will make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who curse you, and I will curse him who curses you, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. And that is still true. As we are people of faith, we enter into the blessing that God put upon Abraham, the father of faith. He said, in blessing, I will bless you. There's a flow that happens here. That as we bless others, the blessing flows through us, and him who blesses will also be blessed. It is so powerful to be a person who speaks blessing. We have this culture in Australia called uh, taking down the tall poppies. The tall poppy syndrome, you heard of that? Everybody know what I'm talking about? Where if you, you know, somebody gets up a little bit too high, we'll say, well, we're just cutting you down to size. We have this friendship camaraderie thing in Australia where we take the mickey out of one another. True. <laughs> where, we, where we take a piece of one another. When it was Anzac Day, I spoke on honour. It was a great, great message. You should go and listen to it. It's on the, it's on the uh, website. And we, and we do this thing in Australia where we, where we have this friendship thing and we try to pull one another down. But the Bible says, in blessing, I will bless you. And we've got to realign our language and our culture to align with the kingdom of heaven and not with the kingdom of our nation. Lord's Prayer, it says, bring the kingdom of heaven to earth like it is in heaven. When you get to heaven, you think God is going to take a piece out of you and think it's fun? Just something to consider. We've got this thing where we take a, have a joke at each other's expense. I'm as guilty as an expert. How do I say all? But I'm working on it because I want to be like God the Father in heaven. Be, be mature. Be perfect. Like your Father in heaven is perfect. Be mature. And I want to mature in my faith and be one who carries the presence of God, be one who, who represents Christ on the earth, and be one who speaks life and blesses and be a blessing to others. And in blessing, God will bless me. And be a blessing to one another and speak words of blessing and speak words of life. Hello? You following this? This is kingdom. To be a blessing. God is a father who blesses. He, he's, he, he blesses his son. In Genesis chapter 39... Oh, I don't think I wrote that one down. <laughs> Chapter 39 of verse 5. The butler and the baker and the king of Egypt. No, that's chapter 40. That's the wrong one. <laughs> so it was from the time that, this is a story about Joseph. He said, from the time that Joseph was overseer of the Egyptian's house and all he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, and the blessing of the Lord was on all that he had in the house and in the field. He's an Egyptian who was no representative of God, but yet God blessed him because there was somebody in his house who carried the blessing of the Lord. That's what I want to be on this earth. But I bring a blessing wherever I go. So when I go into a shop, that shop gets blessed. 
that when I go and meet with a, somebody in their house, that house gets blessed. When I, when I walk with somebody down the street, they get blessed. But the blessing of God is I carry and I bless others with it, that in blessing, I will be blessed. And so we carry the blessing of God. And we carry and represent wherever we are, whatever we do, whoever we're speaking with. And we be people who bless and be prepared to bless others. God is a Father who blesses. So when we're reading Genesis and walking through the genealogy, the Bible says God is the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. And as we have a look at those patriarchs of the Jewish faith, that the blessing was passed from father to son. It's a blessing. That's how it flows. It flows through the line. And the fathers would bless the sons. And I want to expand one of those, those uh, stories. And the last one, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob was one of two uh, a twin. And his brother was Esau. Many of you know the story. So we have Jacob and Esau. The Bible says Esau was a hairy man. He must have been really, really hairy. Really hairy. I know some people, they don't like, oh, I've got a hairy back. Oh, I don't like my back. I'll get it waxed. Oh, I don't know. Nuts, how do you do that? So, bring out the gorilla back, silver back. And here it is, Esau was born, born first. So he should have had the father's blessing. But he sold his birthright. He was hungry. And he said to Jacob, make me something to eat. And so Jacob made him a stew of lentil. He must have been really, really hungry. I don't know. Give me some meat. Anyway, so he must, he must have been really, really hungry to have this stew of lentil. I mean, I'm just saying it sounds tastes bad. Anyway, so <laughs> he made him and he sold his birthright for a stew of lentil. He didn't value what God had given him. And so when, when his dad was old, when Isaac was old, he says, I want to bless you. So he said to Esau, go out into the field and bring back some meat and make me some decent stew. <laughs> I like what's some decent stew like you made. Go and get some game. I like this stew. I don't know if you've ever tasted game, but it's quite strong and gamey. <laughs> and he made this stew. And uh, uh, his mum heard it. Uh, sorry, Jacob's mum heard it. And she quickly called Jacob, said, Jacob, go and, go and kill a goat and get the skin of the goat. Cover your arms with it. Esau must have been really hairy. Okay? <laughs> Cover your arms with it and I'll make the stew and we'll go into your dad and you get the blessing that should have gone to Esau. And he came before Isaac and Isaac was blind and he said, let me feel you. Your voice is like Jacob's, but oh, you feel like Esau. Look at that hairy arm. You seen a Goat, a hairy animal, a hairy arm. And so he stole a blessing. Isaac blessed him. Your brother shall serve you. Your blessing, and I put the father's blessing upon you. You can read it in Genesis 39 to about a few chapters. So I, he put the blessing on him. Then Esau came back and he'd made the stew. And he says, here I am. And Isaac goes, what? I've already blessed you. And he realized your brother has stolen your blessing. And it created this offense. Now, I don't know about you, but when things happen in families, offense can come. I've got a family where that sort of offense has occurred. Because my uncle stole some of the inheritance. Well, that was the perspective of my dad and the, the other brothers and sisters. That there's this offence that happens in a household, in a family, over, over the blessing, over the thing that God is supposed to uh, be a, something wonderful can so easily become a, an offence. And here's this offence between 
Jacob and Esau. And so the blessing of God was upon Jacob. The blessing of God. And he multiplied. The Bible says he planted a field and it grew a hundredfold. And the blessing of God was all over him. He was so blessed. And of course, Esau was angry with him. And he must have been doing okay because he rounded up 400 men and said, we're going to go and we're going to take revenge upon Jacob. He rounded up 400 men. Jacob heard of it, got frightened. Oh, what am I going to do? How, how are we going to do this? Because of, there's this conflict, there's this offense that happens. Esau is after blood. He wants to kill me. He's got rounded up a small army. That's a lot of men, actually. A small army of men, and he's out to get me. So he said, we've got to go back into the land, and so this is what we'll do. We'll gather together all my possessions. I'll get all my camels, all my sheep, all my goats, and he set them into uh, groups. And he sent them across to meet Esau with the 400 men. And Esau met the first group and said, what is this? Who owns all this? And they said, it belongs to my master Jacob as an offering to you, Esau. And then he met the next group and he said, what is this? And he says, these, these belong to my master Jacob as an offering to you. And he met the next group and he said, who, who owns these? And he says, these belong to my master Jacob and they are an offering to you. A peace offering, really. And I give it to you. And then he was left with his wives and his family and he says, what are we going to do? Jacob's still coming with his 400 men. And he said, okay, what we're going to do is you're all going to go before me and we'll send you across and you can go and submit yourself to Esau. And so they went across the river and headed towards Esau and while Jacob was on his own, he wrestled with an angel. An angel came and he wrestled all night with him. And the angel put out of place a muscle in his hip so he could not run away from the conflict. And friends, God wants us to face the issues in our world. He wants us to face the conflict. He wants us to resolve. God has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. He's given to us the power and the grace and the ability of God to move forward. And he'll stop us sometimes from running away. And he stopped Jacob from running away. And he renamed him and he said, I call you Israel, the prince of God, because you have wrestled with God and with men and prevailed. He said both, both with God and with men, and you have prevailed. And so then his wives he came to Esau and said, what is this? These are the wives, family, my servant Jacob, and we submit ourselves to Esau. Then Jacob came across. And he met with Esau. And by this time, he realized what Jacob had done. He'd stolen the blessing, stolen the birthright. But at the end, he offered all that God had blessed him with back to Esau. He gave the blessing back. Here it is, Esau. Here's the blessing. Here is all that God has blessed me with. I give it back to you. I honor you with it. And then Esau saw him and came and fell on his neck and they hugged and, and resolved the conflict. There's such power when we understand the power of the blessing and, and how to walk in the blessing and to bless one another. If you find somebody that's in conflict with you, the Bible says a gift given in secret pacifies wrath. But Jacob was very public in giving back the blessing. We've got to be able to resolve and to walk through and bring the kingdom of heaven rather than, you know, creating more conflict. And be somebody who blesses and, and allow the blessing to resolve. It's making sense to you today. Come on, the power of what God has given us to operate out of a different spirit and a different heart to be able to bring the kingdom of God onto earth. We've got to be the ones when things are going pear shaped that we bring the grace and power of God into the midst, that we bring the life of God into the midst, 
that we bring reconciliation and wholeness, that we be people who bless and not curse. Hello? We're the spiritual shock absorbers of our culture. Deuteronomy 11.26, when God was leading the people of Israel out of Egypt, he said, where's Deuteronomy gone? Deuteronomy literally means the second law. Deuteronomy 11, 26. Behold, I set before you today a blessing and a curse. The blessing, if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you, and the curse. Here's where the curse comes. The curse, if you do not obey the commandments of the Lord your God, but turn aside from the way which I command you today, to go after other gods which you have not known. God never cursed men. But the curse comes from our own disobedience, from walking away from God, from pursuing things that are not of God. That's where the curse comes from. God does not ever want to curse us, ever. We've got to understand who God is, that there is no curse, there's no desire in God to want to curse us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The desire of God is to us and for us. He wants to redeem us from the curse of the law. That right there is the curse of the law. If you do not obey the commandments, then the curse comes. That's where it comes from. Are you hearing this today? See, the blessing of God makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. That is Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 22. The, the blessing of the Lord does not add any sorrow. There's no heartache when God blesses you. He wants to bless. Hello? His desire is to bless us. Let me go on quickly here. Deuteronomy 28 is a list of the blessings that God brings. Deuteronomy 28. It shall come to pass, if you'll diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully in all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. That's Israel, talking to the Jews. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you, because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Anybody here, just have a look at this and see how many of these blessings that you would like to be on your life. Okay? And so, blessed you shall be in the city. Blessed you shall be in the country. That's good. I come from the country. I'm a country boy. I'm going to be blessed out there just as much as I am here. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body. The children. I want blessed children. Healthy, happy, doing great. They'll be blessed. The produce of your ground. Anybody like gardening? And the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. It means your pantry. I like a blessed pantry. Can't tell. <laughs> Bless you you'll be when you come in. Bless you you'll be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command a blessing on you in your storehouses and in all which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments. So this is under the letter of the law, okay. But we don't walk according to the letter of the law, but according to the law of the spirit of life in Christ. That God has given us life. And the law is not written in black and white, but in our hearts, that we would obey what is right before God. And we would have a desire towards God to do what is right before God and what His will and His purpose for our lives is. That we walk in that blessing. And the blessing of God flows because God is a God who blesses. He is a Father who blesses His Son. That's how the blessing flows, from father to son. But I grew up with a, a, 
an unsaved Australian man, who, who, my dad, whom I love, but he didn't understand anything about blessing, and he just would speak these things over my life in reaction. You little, you little, you know, I don't want to go into it all. But I'm so grateful that I've got a new dad in heaven who blesses me. You have a dad in heaven who wants to bless you. There are some people here, I'm just feeling and praying about this this week, and I sense that there are people who feel like they've never had their dad bless them. And there's a whole people that talk about what's called an orphan spirit or an orphan mindset because they feel like they've missed out on having a dad. I want to tell you, you have a father in heaven who wants to bless you and who is ready to put a blessing on you and bless your life. Because the blessing flows from father to son. If we have a look at Malachi, the last uh, book of the Old Testament, Malachi, Italian. Let's <laughs> <Where'd you> go. <laughs> the last verse of the last book of the last chapter of Malachi in the Old Testament. Verse 6, chapter 4, He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. And again here, listen to this, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. It's about the earth, the ground, the fruit of our brow, that which we work upon. That's where the, the curse can come. So we put our hand to the plough and it doesn't bear fruit. We, put our, we go and do things. We go to work and it's like there's never enough money. It just doesn't work. It's about the blessing of the Father that God wants to break the curse off and put a Father over, a spirit of the Father upon you to bless you and to break the, the, the thing that gets around about us and holds us back because our dads, we feel like they didn't love us or they abandoned us or they weren't there or, or they, they passed away or, or something. God wants to put a blessing. He wants to bless us with the Father's blessing. The Bible says, Cursed is everyone who hangs on the tree. And Jesus hung on the tree and took the curse. He took the curse of the law. He took the power of it. He took the spirit of it. Proverbs 26, Like a flitting sparrow, like a flying swallow, so a curse without a cause shall not alight. If you watch the sparrow, they never land because they eat little insects in the air. They're always flying. They don't land and sit on a tree. But if there is no cause, there's no reason for a curse to be upon your life. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says, We are blessed with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places, in Christ. We are blessed with every spiritual blessing. I am in Christ, who is the Son of the Father. And God has blessed Christ with every spiritual blessing, and I am in Christ. So I am seated at the right hand of the Father, in that place of authority, and blessed with his blessing because I am in him. I am in Christ, I am blessed, I am God's favorite. And so are you. Are you hearing this? This is what God has blessed us with. Every spiritual blessing. All those blessings in Deuteronomy 28, all those blessings are yours. All those blessings. Do you ever wake up and feel like, I'm not blessed today? You ever wake up and, oh, my back is killing me? And you speak death over yourself? Oh, my body is not as young as it used to be. The ground is so far away. I 
drop something and I think about, oh, when will I pick that up? I'll pick it up later. <laughs> Go out in the footpath and drop something. Oh, see the council for making it so far away. <laughs> We've got to learn to speak life over ourselves as well. And speak blessing to yourself and accept. This is one of the things that I've found, being able to accept what God says because our insecurity and our self-image that have been put into us from our natural fathers stops us from accepting the blessing of God who is a perfect father. In Jewish culture, they had what's called a Shabbat meal, the meal of the Sabbath. So every Friday night, the day before the Sabbath, they would gather together and they'd have this special meal and at that meal they would declare blessing. They would bless God, thank you God, for this wine and for this bread, thank you for it. When Jesus had the uh, that last Sabbath meal, he was going through the Jewish cultural process of that Shabbat meal and that he would bless it. And then, one of the things that they would do, we did this with somebody once, it's very interesting, then, then the fathers would put a blessing upon their sons and daughters and bless them every week. Can you imagine how powerful that a thing puts into a young man or woman when they get blessed by their dad and prayed over every week? Bless them. That is, and you wonder why the, the Jewish have hold more Nobel Prizes than anybody else because their dads have blessed them. Why are they so financially fruitful? Because their dads have blessed them. Because they, they've passed on the blessing. They've learned how to bless and be a blessing. They put their hand on their daughters and say, you're blessed for you. Blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. You are blessed amongst women. Bless them. That's what the Jews do. I think it's something we should do too. To bless, to bless our kids, to bless them, to bless them, to speak words of life and to be a blessing and to allow the blessing of God flow through us to them, to build them, to build their character, to build their nature, to build, to, to break off every word that negative is spoken about them and to put the Father's blessing upon them. That's what we're called to do, friends. That's who we are with people who bless. Let the blessing of God flow through you and to you. Let the blessing flow and be a father. Father, I thank you for your, for your word today. I thank you for this, this such a powerful thing. To be people who carry the blessing of God and the life of your spirit, the grace of God, the identity of Christ, to be seated at the right hand of the Father, to be blessed with every spiritual blessing, to be people who, who walk in the character and nature of Christ, identify with Christ, and to be blessed because you have blessed him and we are in Christ and we are your favourite. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you for it. We honour you, we love you. Father, we accept your blessing today. In Jesus' lovely name. There are some people here and you have so strongly identified with this, this thing that I spoke about of not experiencing the Father's blessing. And if you would allow me, I would love to represent God as a father and put the blessing upon you and bless you and, be a, and just let the blessing of the father flow to you. Allow God to put a blessing, to speak blessing in words of life. If you, if you would like to respond to that and come and receive that blessing, I'd love to be able to just impart to you. Because it's something that God has just put so, is resonating so strongly within me. Because God has blessed me and I'm grateful. If that's you, please come. Please come. Allow me to just pray over you. Allow God to, to put that blessing upon you. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. Don't, be, don't let a mindset stop you from receiving what God has got for you. Yeah, yeah. Oh my. There's more, I'm sure of it. Let, let me pray a Father's blessing upon you.
But I want to just speak a blessing over you right now, that God would bless you, that he'd bless your days, that he'd bless your path, that he'd bless your journey, that he'd bless your, the, the way forward for you, that he'd bless you in all these days that are coming ahead, in whatever shape of their form, that you would walk in the blessing of God and it will add no sorrow to you. Father, I bless them in Jesus' name. God bless you. Have a fantastic day. Just appreciate you so much. We're looking forward to gathering again next Sunday. Have a great day. God bless you.